Hello everyone and welcome back. Today I'm going to be trying out a bunch of new and exciting makeup. Okay, I'll highlight a few things that I'm ultra excited to try, starting with the Fenty Beauty stick foundation. I've heard nonstop good things, so I'm intrigued to try it out myself. I don't know what I'm going to create with this today, but I'm so excited to finally try one of these palettes out. This is the Danessa Myricks IM palette. It's one of the yearly light work palettes she comes out with. This year it looks like this. I am overwhelmed with choice already, but in the best way. I'm excited to dive into this today. I also received my order of the e.l.f. lip oils, so those are just a few of the things I'm really excited to try out today, but I have a bunch more here. So before we get into it all, I would love for you to subscribe if you haven't already, and let's get started. I think I'm going to start with the eyes because I have two eye looks in mind that I really want to create right now. So I'm thinking of doing like a two-in-one video, but then I'll go with the look I like the most. So I'm going to quickly prime my eyes. I'm just going to use my About Face Eye Primer because I'm going to go in with a cream shadow just to create a little bit of a base for one of the looks. So prior to filming, I did a bunch of swatches of this palette because I just wanted to get a feel for the formula. Well, actually there are seven different formulas in this palette, which is crazy. I'll name the different formulas. So there are Heavenly Halos, Fusion Flakes, Silk Press Shifters, Whipped Powder Shifters, Molten Metals, Suede Shimmers, Cushion Chromes, and I think that's it. <laughs> that's it. Like seven isn't enough, that's crazy. But this is what the palette looks like. And some of these have crazy, crazy shifts. The shades that really grab my attention when looking at this is the greens over here, this shade right here, and these blues on this side. Like even just looking at that on my fingers is insane. And this green and on my pinky here, they have such a cool shift to them. Like when I'm looking at them right now, when it's not in direct, uh, lighting. I see turquoise and blues and pinks and just so many different colors. It's truly magical. So I'm thinking of creating like a green eye and a blue eye. Okay, so let's start off with the blue one. I'm going to start off by creating like kind of like a sharp angled eyeliner using this Melt Cosmetics Slick Waterline Eye Pencil because it's so fun to experiment with these types of textures on top of blacks because it can take some of the different shifts and bring them more to the forefront. It's really interesting. I did a few swatches like that as well. These type of shadows are really fun to experiment with and I hope I can kind of demo that today. I'm going to follow my angle from my lower lash line here straight out kind of like so I think I'm getting carpal tunnel <laughs> I cross stitched on my relaxing Sunday my wrist is super sore like I can hardly blend my eye here right now I'm just gonna pretend that didn't happen that's gonna piss me off but it's okay I can I can fix that And I kind of wanted this one to fade. I think I brought it a little close to the center, but I think it'll be cool actually. It's meant to be. So this is what I'm going to start off with. Now I'm going to grab the shade Strong from this palette, which is this one right here, which has kind of like a navy blue shift to it, but it also has like a lot of teal and green in it. It's really pretty. I'm going to grab it on that same brush. This is a Glisten number no. three brush, I believe. It's kind of like a flat brush. And I'm going to apply it over here. And I'm picking a lot up on my brush because I want this to be quite opaque. So I'm going to encounter some fallout for sure. Okay, starting with that. And then I might fade it into resilient or maybe protected. I definitely want protected in there. That's a really cool, really pretty color. There's also these flaky ones. But this one has quite a bit of green and I kind of want to stay more in the pinks and purples. See, like I get overwhelmed with choice. There's so many to be made. Let's do resilient. So it's on the top here, right, this one, which is a heavenly halo. The first one I went in with is a silk press shifter. Taking the Smith 253 with a little bit of that color and I'm kind of 
tapping in between those two to kind of blend them together. And I'm going to take this right up to where that black fades out. And then I'm going to be very generous with the shade Protected, this one. Which has that really pretty pink reflect, pinky violet. I'm dampening my Smith 253. I just put a little puddle of a setting spray on my desk here, just so I could really saturate this brush. And I'm taking some of the shade Protected and I'm going to put it on my lower lash line here. And then I kind of envisioned like dampening a shade and like doing something else. What color should I do? I'm not sure. I don't want to mess it up. So that's like the first eye. Now moving on to the other. I'm going to start with that same pencil and I'm just going to create like a C shape on the outside of my eye. I received a comment from Anastasia asking for a green glittery sparkly eye with a red lip and ever since reading that it's been on my mind so and I think this palette is the perfect one to create that so I want to see what I can do here. I'm just going to create kind of like a smoky base just so we have some nice depth underneath all of the shimmers. Just like so and then i'm going to be working with this row over here so i'm going to be working with the shade evolving abundant and enough these three shades here <laughs> this one's crazy wiping that smith 253 i'm taking the shade enough and i'm going to put that on top of the black i never film this eye because i can't see what i'm doing on my monitor and stuff Then I'm taking that crazy abundant shade and I'm going to put this all over my lid and then I'll see if I can blend it upwards. I'm having so much fun. Now I'm taking more of Enough and I'm putting it on this blending brush. This is a BK Beauty Angie Hot and Flashy A502. And I'm just going to put this up in the crease a little I don't know. I don't know if I like this. Um, it might grow on me. Okay, too soon to judge. Now I'm dampening this little detail brush and I'm taking that lighter shade Evolving and I'm going to put this hopefully as my inner corner and then wrap it around. Let's see how much brighter this one is. Oh yeah, I might actually even put some right here. And then I kind of want to put a little something in the crease, so I'm just going to take this shade from Patrick Ta here. It's just like a contour color. You can use like a contour powder or like this kind of shade is in every palette. It's just on my desk here. And I'm going to just put this in my crease to kind of fade it off. I really wanted to emphasize the darkness right here so i'm going to take a little bit of a black shadow a matte one and i'm going to apply it right here hopefully blending it into that shimmer that's right here and it should appear a little shimmery and i'm layering a little bit more of enough just over top of it to really make it look like an even darker shimmer shade okay so here are the two eyes. I'm going to add a little bit of mascara. I think I'm gonna go with this one. I think this actually is pretty cool. This one is nice, but since it's the day after Halloween, I feel like it's Christmas now. So we gotta go with this one on a red lip. You know, I already hear Mariah Carey defrosting in the background, okay? But I'm going to put on some of this mascara, which is the Heroine Make Long Up Mascara. It's a new one I have not tried. Just so we could see what it looked like with a little bit of a darker lash. Cute. This one's so much more impactful. Hey, I love both. Let me know which one you would have gone with, but I'm going to go with this one. And here are the eyes all done. I think they turned out really cool. I really like seeing both eyes done together now. Really pretty. Okay, so now let's dive into the base. And today I'm going to be trying out the Fenty Beauty Ease Drop Blur and Smooth Tint Stick. So they sent over three shades. I'm gonna quickly swatch them. This is shade number four, which already looks good. I wear the shade four in the Ease Drop Skin Tint, but we'll see. This is the shade three, and this is two. Everything I have is 
covered in a layer of glitter. So I'm probably going to have a lot of glitter embedded in my look today. That one's for sure too light. I think this is the best match. This one's a little bit yellow for me. I'm gonna go with shade number four. This has such a whipped feel to it. It doesn't feel hard or waxy like a lot of other cream foundation sticks. And I'm going to blend out with my MAC 170 brush. I like how it's blending actually. Sometimes with sticks, they need a little bit more elbow grease to blend out, but this is spreading real nice. Okay, that looks really good from afar. It actually looks super, super flawless up close too. Very refined. It is grabbing on some of my dry patches that I didn't know I had. I have a little dry patch right here and on my nose as well. Mm, now that I'm looking closer, it might be a little, a little catchy on the dry spots. My skin is very sensitive today and this week just because it's you know, that really fun time of the month. But from afar, it's fine. But up close, I'm like, I don't know, just right here. Hopefully my camera can grab it right here. I don't know. I'm just going to see how it builds up. I'm kind of breaking out on this side of my face. Just wanted to see. Okay, it can be built up. I liked the initial layer, I just wanted to see. I'm gonna have to try this again when I exfoliate my face. <laughs> just for good measure, I'm just going to go over it with my dampened Kosif sponge. From afar, I think it looks really good, but up close, there's minor things. I'm like, but we'll see if it kind of sinks in and warms up. It doesn't seem to wanna to adhere to my nose, which is funny. In some areas, it's a little texture enhancing, and some others, it's very blurring. First impression is I'm feeling unsure about it. But now let's move on to concealer. I'm going to be using the Givenchy Skin Caring Concealer. I have a few shades here, but this one looks good to me. This is the shade N120. Yeah, that looks like a good tone. I'm just going to apply a little bit. <laughs> or a lot bit. <laughs> okay, there we go. The schnoz is covered. Oh no! Okay. My under eye crack ruined my eye look right there, but that's okay, I can fix it. It's just a shimmer. You guys, last night, one of my Canadian dreams came true. They put me in the little intro for the Battle of Alberta um, thing. They put me in the intro video for the Flames and Oilers video, and it made one of my dreams come true ever since I was a kid. I loved going to hockey games. I still do, it's one of my favorite things, and I was in the intro video with my friend Allie, and I couldn't believe it. It's, I actually got really emotional about it. I had a bunch of people text me and I just felt, I felt like a star. It felt really cool to be up there with all of the history of um, like flames and oilers together. It was, it was cool. It was really cool. Yeah, so I'm still gagged over that. Um, I don't even know if I explained it very well, but it was a really, really cool moment for me. <laughs> I don't really have the best representation of this concealer right here just because I wasn't able to get all the way up to my eye but it looks pretty good I did wear it the other night and I liked it I'm not sure if it really compares to my tower 28 at the moment but it kind of feels a little bit more aligned with the makeup forever HD concealer that I've also been really liking it has kind of like that nice everyday feel where it's not so so full coverage but it still has like the great kind of everyday appropriate kind of coverage and I feel like it would look really good with a lot of foundations high to low coverage ones. Before I forget, I want to fix my little mistake here. Now for my powder, I'm going to be using my Givenchy Prisma Libre, and I'm using the shade 2. I actually put this in my Sephora recommendations video, which probably felt really random to you guys, but I've been using this one and I've been loving it, so I thought I'd feature it today. This is very, very popular. I don't know why I haven't tried it sooner, but it's really, really nice. It's super blurring, but it also gives some nice dimension to your skin. It kind of feels like a loose version of the Closest Cloud Set to me. You know how that one has such a nice blurring property, but it also doesn't cut away all of your skin's dimension. You know, it just has a little magic in between there. I feel like this is what it gives, but I love how it comes in loose form. 
especially for my under eyes. It's been awesome. Super brightening as well. It's just been awesome and fuss free. I mean, like look how good that looks. That actually makes a really awesome pairing with that concealer too. I'm loving how this is coming together. Um, that might stop now because now this is so random, but I got a package from Simi Hayes which I'm very shocked by because I feel like I've never said one good thing about their products. Starting off with my number one disappointment, <laughs> this little thing right here. This is so insulting, you know? The packaging on this one is kind of broken. Second of all, this is all that you get in this product right here. Pretty much a sample size. I feel like there are sample sizes that are more generous than this, and this costs so much for this amount. This is a this is a formula I highly dislike just because of the amount you get. Hold on, it wasn't scrolled up by the way. <laughs> there, it made such a difference. <laughs> but I got it. This is their Melting Bronze Balm. And that kind of sounds like the Makeup by Mario Skin Enhancer and like those types of products, like the Merit one. And I was intrigued. I also like the looks of their packaging. I've said that all the time. I've said that about every one of their products. I think their packaging is super cute. These are fun because you can also stack them. I'm going to try one of the lighter shades. This is Sycamore, shade 01. It has one of those, it kind of looks exactly like the Makeup by Mario Bronze Balm. See, it has that really cool kind of grainy texture, but then once you swatch it, it kind of melts. Oh, this one has kind of like a more matte cream feel. Oh, that kind of looks like a good color, actually. So that's Sycamore 01. The other shade I have is Cedar 02. They look the same. <laughs> I also have the other two shades. I don't know if they sent all of them to me, but this is the shade Oak 03. Okay, that one looks different. That actually looks pretty. That's a pretty undertone. And the last one is Terracotta 04, which looks like oak. There's like not much difference. There's like a huge jump, very odd, but then they're the same. I'm going to go for the first color, Sycamore. I'm using my MAC 143S brush to apply. I'm going to start on my forehead though, just so I can gauge what's gonna happen. little orange. Oh no, I don't want to have an orange bronzer because the eyes are so cool. Ugh, it might not be that bad. Please don't be that bad. Okay, it's not that bad. But it's not the best. It blended out fine. I actually liked how it blended out, but I don't like the color. So maybe the other one would have been better, but that one looks even more orange in comparison. So I think to counteract that, I'm going to put a cool toned contour color just to kind of balance things out. And for that, I'm using my e.l.f. contour in the shade Fair Light, which is pretty stone gray on me. I feel like the formulation of that product was pretty good. No major complaints, just I don't like the shades. I'm just going to kind of calm things down here using my foundation brush, because I really blew that out. I had like a smudge in my contact lens and I didn't know what I was really doing. I was getting a little stressed because of my eyesight, but I think it's kind of saved. I love how you can stack them. It's fun to play with. Okay, so what's next? So now for blush and highlight, I received some of the new Makeup Forever cheek products. So I have the Artist Blushes in three shades and I have some of the Artist Highlighters in two shades. There's this one shade, Wherever Rose, B230, looks really pretty and I think it'd be pretty with this and a red lip because I have to keep that in mind. That would be pretty. This looks stunning. This is the shade Limitless Berry. Way too intense for today, but it looks like a really pretty shade. And the last one they sent is Anywhere Peach, which looks like a really pretty soft peachy cade. Peachy cade? Peachy shade. The highlights they sent look pretty intense. This golden one is the shade Anywhere Glimmer, which looks pretty glittery. And this shade is Wherever Pearl, which looks a little less glittery. This kind of looks very holiday-esque though. The only time I'll ever wear like a glittery highlight is for Christmas. That's when I'm like, it's fine. Or if I'm like trying to look like vampire skin, then I'm kind of about it. But otherwise, it's not my favorite. I think I'm gonna go with the pearly one because it actually looks like it has like a, a seamless look. It actually reminds me quite a bit of the Rare Beauty highlighter. Just in the way 
It's very thin and super silky. This one's different. The shade Pearl is giving me a lot of Rare Beauty vibes. I'm not loving my base right now, but let's add the highlighter anyways. <laughs> They have some fun shifts in these too, apparently. I've seen them on TikTok, but this one blends really nicely. I'm not a huge fan of the shade. I feel like it's looking a little purpley on my skin and it's just not what I love tonal-wise, but formula-wise, it's actually blending in really nicely. It looks like one in my base and I love how intense the shift is. Before I go in with blush, I'm going to set my face with more of the Givenchy powder. I kind of want to have a set base before adding that so it doesn't go off the rails. I went a little crazy with the powder. It's making me look a little pale, but I wanted to be blurred out. <laughs> That's the thing. And it worked, it worked. Taking that Wherever Rose shade a little bit in the palm of my hand, then I'm going to apply. Oh, that's a really pretty color. These feel really, really nice and silky. When I first touched them, they reminded me slightly of the Dior blushes, just in the silkiness of it all. It felt really, really nice. They felt really diffusable and it is. It's actually going on really beautifully. Sometimes I get intimidated with powder blushes. Sometimes they can really grab onto my skin and kind of stay put, but this is blending with ease. Oh, I really do not like certain aspects about my base today, which is making me sad because the eyes are so killer. That's okay though, but that's what these types of videos are for. So now I'm just going to quickly do my brows. So while I'm off doing that, enjoy the Kitter mission. <laughs> It's coming together very nicely. Just going to wipe off my lip balm. And now I'm going to try my lip oils from e.l.f. So I actually wore a few of them already, okay? They're really nice too. <laughs> I wanna do a swatching reel, but I wanna try these two shades on. I might go with this one, so I'll save that one to the end. But this is the shade Rose Envy. It looks really, it's on my sweatpants now. It looks very similar to Dior Rosewood, which is my favorite shade out of the Dior lip oils. So there's Dior. Here's a little comparison of the doe foots. They're identical pretty much. This one's just a little more chubby maybe. Okay, yeah, they're definitely different in tone. This one's more pigmented though. Is it? They're about the same. Mm, no, it's more pigmented. <laughs> But yeah, I thought they were going to be a little bit more similar than that, but I'm not mad at that. This is so cute. That is so cute. That actually looks really good with the blush today. They feel really nice. They're not as grippy as the Dior ones, which I don't mind. They have a really nice gel-like slip to them, which is really comforting. It does have like a minty taste and feeling on the lips, if you know, you know. I know a lot of people don't like mint. I personally love it. They feel really nice and a little bit cooling too, which I am a fan of. So there's that one. Now I'm going to try on the shade Red Delicious on its own, but I might create a nice, my roommate just sneezed or something. Uh, I might create like a nice lip combo with this. Okay, it's like barely pigmented. Oh, the texture though is so nice. So nice. My fluffy roommate is now making a noise. Just kidding, he's my son. Okay, 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 okay. I'm gonna figure out a lip combo and I'll be right back. It's the saddest meows I've ever heard. <laughs> I'm going to whip out my most favorite red ever, which is the Fenty Beauty Uncensored Stunna Lip Paint. It's stunning. But I'm first going to line my lips using the shade 712 Either Cherry from Makeup Forever. Actually, I changed my mind. This is going to be too red. I want kind of like a darker lip liner. So I'm using Auburn from MAC.
It's one of the prettiest reds out there. So here's the makeup look with the matte red lip. I think we need the gloss. I'm now going to layer over the e.l.f. Red Delicious. I'm just wiping my doe foot so I don't add more red pigment, but oh my God, it's Christmas, you guys. It's Christmas. <laughs> what a stunning lip color. Wow, that is one of the prettiest lip combos. I haven't worn a red lip in so long and I've missed it because when I had red hair, I just hated the combination of a bright red lip like this with the auburn red. I just thought it was so ugly. But this with the short hair, I think the red lip might make a comeback for me. I like it. I have been shifting my head side to side like this, watching these shimmer shades dance on my eyes. Wow, it's hypnotic. Thank you, Anastasia, for the great look inspiration today. This one's for you. I would have never done this by myself because sometimes I'm so scared of pairing reds with greens because it is Christmas, but I feel like this is such a, a serve. I don't know. I feel really, really good in this look. Although it's like a lot, but I think it's the perfect amount of a lot. <laughs> Let me know what you guys think, but I think this is such a fun look. But now let's dive into my thoughts on these products. So starting with the Fenty Beauty stick foundation, I'm not sure. I feel very aware that I'm wearing like a, a layer of foundation on my skin. I feel like I built it up a little too much today. That could have been my fault. I also am not loving how it's grabbing onto every little dry patch I have, which I didn't know I had any, but I think I'm gonna have to retry this when my skin isn't as sensitive and when I exfoliate. Then I'll get a better feel for this product, but right now I'm not, I'm not sure. That's that's where I'm going to lay on it, but I feel like there is a lot of potential. I like how it's looking on my forehead for the most part, aside from just right here. It looks really nice and smooth. I think it looks really great like on my cheeks as well. There's just minor things that I'm being hypercritical about. Moving on to the concealer, I think this is going to be quite nice. It hasn't budged or moved, and I think it did a great job at correcting my under eyes. I'm excited to retry it and like shove it up right near my eyes and really see what it can do, but I am excited to retry it. Same with the powder. The powder has been a huge favorite this month so far. I feel like that's going to be my new powder obsession. But moving into the bronzer here, I forgot to take a peek at how much product there is. There is one gram of product in here. I forget how expensive these are. Let me just... It's $34 for one gram of product. And just in comparison, like the Makeup by Mario Soft Sculpt Transforming Skin Enhancer has five grams. The Makeup by Mario Stick has 10.5 grams. The Rare Beauty Stick has seven grams. Tower 28 has 4.5 grams. So again, they're putting like a little, little bitty bit of product for a high price point and just like a mid ass shade range. <laughs> So to me, this is a complete no. Sorry, but I tried, but big no. Bye-bye. For the Makeup for I'm just like, let's move on now. Talking about the Makeup Forever powders, I really am into the blush. Not so much the highlight. I don't love this tone on me. I think it's just too icy. I think there is a lot of potential. I'll have to look at the other shades that are available. It feels like a really nice formula, but I just, I don't like the color for today. It's way too bluey for my tastes. And this gold one is quite glittery. So this is the shade range I would definitely check out in person because I feel like it changes from shade to shade. But the formula itself feels really, really nice and silky. I like how thin it is on my skin. It blended out flawlessly. I think it's just my preferences here that are getting in the way of me really liking these. But the blush on the other hand feels really, really nice and silky and fine and I don't know, I really liked it. And this color is really cute. I feel like this is going to be one I reach for quite often. For the e.l.f. lip oils, they killed it. They actually killed it, killed it. I hope that they continue to bring out more colors. It'd be really cool to see like a black one. I've been really into black glosses as of late. It'd just be cool to see a wider shade range too, just because I want it in every color. It has such a nice texture. It feels so nice. They feel a lot more expensive than what they are. Highly recommend them. I think I actually prefer this over the NYX Fat lip oils now. I just love the minty sensation. Big fave. And finally, for the Danessa Myricks Lightwork 
volume 5 palette, the I Am palette. It is so fun to work with. It's also insanely expensive. I believe this is $170 Canadian, which is outrageous, but there's a light butt for me because there are so many different formulas and I feel like they definitely put a lot of work and detail into this. But then again, I was sent this palette. Would I purchase this palette on my own accord? I don't know if I would because I don't know how much I would actually use this in my day-to-day -day life. I think this is really fun to like pull out these really fun looks. But then again, it's really depending on you like if you see yourself using this like every day or on a weekly basis if this is something that's not just going to sit in a drawer <laughs> i don't know but the shifts and the colors are really nice i feel i do have so much love for it already because i know how much like work they put into here and the formulas are incredible and they work and they're really fun to look at and experiment with. There's a lot of effort and I feel like this is a product that if you really love, like and you see yourself like loving for a long time and really getting a good use out of it, I think you'd be over the moon happy with it. But if like, I don't want you guys to just like go out and buy it just for it to sit in a drawer, you know? Yeah, that's how I feel. It's a really good product. The shades are amazing. They worked wonders today as you guys saw and i'm excited to create some really fun looks with it but that's what i think i don't want to go in circles with my thoughts about it but that's my statement <laughs> And that's going to be everything from me. I really hope you enjoyed today's video and found it helpful or fun. If you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up. I'll have everything linked and listed in the description down below, so feel free to check that out, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye, guys.